Hi, loving good earth scientists. It's good to be back. It's been a while since we've had our video notes. Um, today we're going to be talking about soil, uh, the ground beneath our feet, and we're going to be looking at the standard. If I can get it to advance. There we go. Um, that you should be able to describe soil as consisting of weathered rocks and decomposed organic material. So it's been very important that we've um, learned about weathering and learned about rocks because we need to know that information to be able to describe soil. Now the first thing we want to look at is what makes up a healthy soil. So to do that, let's just look at the definition of soil. Soil is basically mineral fragments, humus, air, water, and living things such as plant roots, insects, and worms. If you looked at this little pie graph that shows you about 47% is, is made up of minerals, air and water make up about 25% of soil, and then that remaining little bit is the humus. So then you say, well, what is humus? Well, humus is organic material. It's kind of that decomposed um, plants and animals, uh, leaves, um, plants that have died, animal litter, anything like that. And basically it is very, very important to help um, for the growth of vegetation. Now, all soil comes from what we call parent rock. And parent rock is um, basically the rock that makes up that particular type of soil. So all across the United States, all, you know, all over the world, soil is different. And it's all based on what kind of rock um, is found in that particular area. Because all soil is is weathered rock, weathered mineral fragments, and then the humus, the air, the water, and living things that are in that area. So how does soil form? Soil starts out as a rock. Basically, if you look at this picture, you have almost a big solid chunk of rock that's in the ground, okay? And over time, and again, we're talking hundreds of years, that rock starts to break down. It becomes weathered, and we get smaller pieces of rock. And then we're able to get a little bit of vegetation in there and organic material where leaves might have fallen or um, animals and things might have um, died and decomposed. And then over more time, we start to get a very thin layer of soil uh, because of the, those rock pieces and the organic material, the humus. And then decaying matter makes the soil thick and rich. Some soil is really good for planting. We call that fertile soil um, because there's a lot of decaying material. There's a lot of minerals and things that are in that soil that make it good and healthy for plants to grow. And here's just another picture of kind of how it works out, where you've got your solid bedrock. Notice the, the rain up in the left picture there. And that over time, we have get some chemical weathering, we get some uh, mechanical weathering, and, and then the parent rock breaks down, and we're starting to get some weathered pieces with a teeny bit of organic matter. matter. Maybe the wind has blown some things, maybe even plants and animals have carried it in. And then sometime later, we start to get um, some humus and a little bit of soil. That's in that third picture. And then the fourth picture, you've got a nice developed soil with that is able to grow, grow um, some good plants. Uh, something I want you to, to know is a little bit about types of soil and soil particles. So you know sand. We'll wait for the bell to ring. And, uh, and sand is very small. When you, when you take a, piece of, pick a handful of sand, the sediment is extremely small. Okay, So let's say we could blow it up and, and say it's that big yellow piece um, whoops, right uh, here. Okay, Here's our coarse sand. And let's say we, we blow up our sand and that's as big as it gets. Okay, And then there's some medium sized sand. And so we'll say that's the green piece. Okay, But again, th think about sand. I mean, th these are small sediments. These are small particles. 
And then the blue piece is even finer sand. And we're going to look in class at, at a sample of sand, and you'll see that there's different sizes. But again, think about how small sand is. Now once you look at silt, silt is actually a type of soil particle that is smaller than even your finest grain of sand. It is extremely small. Um, it, it's less than 0 0.05 millimeters in diameter. Okay, very, 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 very small. And then even smaller than silt is that itty bitty teeny tiny speck that's on our screen there, clay. Clay is the smallest soil particle, and that's what a lot of Georgia is. And um, you know, if we had time, we could look at the infiltration and see that clay actually holds that water in because the particles are so small, all the water kind of gets sopped in to the clay, and it's not the best for growing. Okay, but if we had all sand, all the water infiltrates through the soil and the sand, and it's not good for for growing either. Okay, um, but that's something else that you'll look at later. So there are different types of soil, but every type of soil that exists is a mixture of sand and silt and clay. Now the perfect mixture of soil is something we would call loam. And what loam is, is a 40% mixture of sand, it's a 40% mixture of silt, and then you've got 20% mixture of clay. So you've got some of the larger sediment, and then some of the middle sized sediment, and then just a little bit of that small sediment of clay. But what happens is it, it really is able to hold the right amount of water that vegetation needs to grow. Now it doesn't mean that other soils aren't good, but if you were to look for the perfect mixture of soil, it would be called loam, and it's that 40% sand, 40% silt, and 20% clay. And then uh, something else that, that scientists will look at is things that are called a soil profile. Okay, and it just kind of tells them everything about soil. As, and and they'll, what they'll do is they'll dig vertically into the ground and they'll pull up a sample just kind of like our core sample of, of NICE that I have in the classroom, that big long cylinder of NICE. They kind of do that with soil and then they study the different layers. And we call those layers horizons. Okay, um, so the like the horizontal part of the profile, we call those horizons, they're the layers, and then the whole entire picture of the soil is called a soil profile. And um, this website is available and you can um, click on uh, this link here and you can go um, look at a little bit more information on soil profiling if you'd like. So what is a soil horizon? Again, the horizon is the layer. It's the horizontal piece, okay? And they have different letters, okay? So the first one, that very top layer, is called um, horizon O. And that's where you have your dead plants, your dead animals, litter, things like that, are all on that top um, horizon of your profile, which is horizon O, okay? And then underneath that, we have what is called the um, A horizon, okay? And the A horizon is directly beneath the O horizon, and we call it, this is, this is amazing, top soil, because it's kind of the top of, of our soil. It's under the humus. The humus is what makes up that O layer, okay? So there's our top soil. And then we have um, E, which is the zone of intense leaching. And the, see what happens when it rains, all that water carries some of the minerals and the organic matter and all that stuff down into the um, soil. It infiltrates it, it pulls it down due to gravity. And so that, that E section between those, those two yellow lines is where it's, it's really rich in those minerals and things. The zone of intense leaching, and there's our top soil, okay? Um, and then at B, horizon B, okay, that's, I, I usually call it subsoil, okay, and it usually collects dissolved substances from the upper horizon where that leaching happens and then it kind of trickles down into that B horizon. And then, and then you have C, and that's where you have weathered bedrock. So you notice there you've got little, you've got 
um, pieces of rock. You've got sediments there because the bedrock has been weathered. Okay, um, so that's the C. And then there's one more layer, and our picture does not have it on there, but it would actually be right under that C, and it would be the bed rock, the entire chunk, the solid chunk of rock that made that soil um, to begin with. Okay, it would, it would be the parent rock that we talked about earlier. And I remember it, you know, it's kind of the bed. It's on the bottom, and everything else is lying on top of it, so that R is the um, is the bedrock. So these are our soil horizons, the layers, the horizontal layers that make up the entire profile, the entire picture of soil. So hopefully this gives you a little bit of an understanding. Um, when you come to class, you should have filled out your pink notes to go with this, and then um, we're going to have a little five question check to see if you understood um, this video and this PowerPoint. So if, if you're a little hesitant or didn't get something filled out, go back and watch it again and then be ready to take a little five question check to see how you did on understanding. So I'll see you in class. Have a great evening.